For five years now, I've been telling a joke. If, if I had a company and I wanted to promote it, and it was in cybersecurity, I'd say it used blockchain and then capitalize the A and the I. The joke is that those are two really big buzzwords, blockchain and AI. You get it? The only thing which can stop a bad AI is good AI. Greetings from the Moscone Center for RSA Conference. I'm Joe Uchel, and this is On the Trade Floor, the show recorded in Moscone West, even though the trade floor is in Moscone North and South. It's a show that postulates naming things is easy, but maps are hard. If the programming for a conference can make a point, one of the points made by this year's RSA Conference is that AI can no longer be treated as an emerging technology. The conference has as many machine learning talks as I can remember, with none of them being predicated on anything too far in the future. AI, and I'm going to use that term interchangeably with machine learning, is here now. That means it's here for defense, it's here for adversaries, and it's here to be attacked. But to be clear, it's also still here as a marketing term. These two things are true. One is that to build a security product nowadays, you really do, for most, not every, not not every, not in every product category, but there are many product categories in which you really have to have machine learning in your product in order to make it work. Um, like that's true. But the other truth is that like the way machine learning gets talked about is not in practical terms. It's in these like wild, like you know, sort of, you know, magical terms. That's Joshua Sachs, chief scientist at Sophos, who gave a talk Tuesday at RSA about evaluating vendor claims about artificial intelligence. There's a long history of skepticism about AI in marketing, and for good reason. AI is a black box that's very hard to verify. In 2019, venture capital firm MMC released a report that 40% of European firms claiming to use AI didn't use AI in any meaningful way. We're a long way from there. Whether they advertise it or not, your favorite security product likely includes some form of machine learning. But Sachs's so claims about machine learning are often based on as an evaluator of, of smaller premise. companies that, we, that we're constantly considering acquiring. Um, so in, in that role, I'm constantly evaluating companies that are making claims about their, their you know, AI systems that exist in their products. Um, so so here's, how I, here's how I approach that. Like, um, so I'm, I'm most interested not in the specific mathematical technique that um, a given company is using. I'm interested more in how uh, a given company is approaching AI R&D. Being the most elaborate learning algorithm. It may have more to do with the data it learns from. That, that process starts with um, identifying training data that they can use. So, I, so you know, I think one has to interrogate the way in which um, a, a given company is acquiring data. Um, one has to ask questions about the, the um, quality of that training data in terms of how well it actually represents the real world, um, whether or not that data is uh, available as a kind of stream, which is continuously refreshed versus just a static data set. So that, that matters a lot. So I mean, I've seen companies that are training their machine learning models on data that they got in 2019, and that data isn't being updated in any way. That can be a chicken or egg problem for startups, he said, because the telemetric data used to train products, including Sophos's, is typically collected by the vendor creating the product. You need customers before you can make a product, even though you can't have customers without a product. A lot of the evaluations he makes of small vendors hinge on how the vendors handle that problem and what assumptions they make along the way. If security using AI is a conversation the community is sick of having, Securing AI is one we haven't had enough. With the prevalence of AI in industries as far-flung as retail, entertainment, and technology, 
InfoSec personnel may have to start doing something new, red teaming attacks against those algorithms. That was the subject of a conference panel, which Christina Liegeti sat on. So we, we red team cybersecurity systems, traditional cybersecurity systems. We want to understand our threats and vulnerabilities in the normal, normal cyber context. But if you're introducing the complexity of AI into your system, it brings a totally new surface level of attacks, like a totally new attack surface that is in some cases very separated from the normal cyber attack surfaces and, and could be attacked in totally different ways that are disconnected entirely from traditional cyber attacks. So you need to start thinking about red teaming your system all over again. <laughs> Liagudi is operations manager for the AI and Autonomy Innovation Center at MITRE. She worked on the ATLAS framework, which is the AI adversary equivalent of the attack framework. AI is vulnerable to several kinds of attacks. Fabricated inputs can game results. The Yagadi uses the example of fake videos used in the United States and China to trick facial recognition into thinking attackers were other people. Poisoning learning data can throw algorithms off track. IBM's Beat Busser who presented at this year's RSA conference, demonstrated methods of using the outputs from specially tailored queries to reverse engineer training data at last year's RSA conference. Other research has shown mechanisms to duplicate the AI itself. That means attackers can steal both intellectual property and, for example, personal data being used within the system. Buster's presentation this year looked to address anonymizing data without cost and accuracy a problem that has plagued anonymizers so far. Last year we introduced attacks against privacy of machine learning models, so basically attacks where you can do something with a trained machine learning model and extract information about the data that that machine learning model was trained on. And uh, that can lead to leakage of private information which is uh, uh, very heavily regulated and uh, something you have to prevent. Or, and this year, uh, we introduced and presented two new algorithms that we have created to uh, anonymize the data before it's used to train the machine learning model. That way you create a model that only uses uh, an anonymized data, but still has a good performance. And the second algorithm is an algorithm that makes sure that you only use as much data that you need to achieve your goal, so that you don't use too much data to, uh, or more data than you need, which is also one uh, thing that's uh, uh, required by the Privacy Regulation Act, so that you, only, that you minimize the data that you collect for the purpose of the business. Attacks on AI are already being seen in the wild, said Leah Getty. The level of sophistication of these can, attacks can vary dramatically. So you could have everything from you know, script kitties to nation state actors, like a massive variety in what these attacks could look like. And depending on the kind of systems that they're interested in going after, the motivation for their particular attacks, they could put together different types of attacks that could be widely applicable. And then they're just going after all sorts of very similar style systems. So there, there could be some reusability that makes it concerning enough to where it's not just a all right, a very tailored attack solution that you only have to face in very specific circumstances. Those attacks aren't the only way that criminals might wade into the world of machine learning. Elsewhere in RSA conference, researchers from Armory Blocks discussed how generative AI could be used to improve phishing lures, rapidly creating websites, images, blog posts, and other toes in a web footprint that help create a convincing identity. At last week's Sphere conference in Helsinki, Mikko Hapanen, Chief Research Officer for WithSecure, argued that machine learning would eventually be used to automate all sorts of processes within an attack. Machine learning wouldn't just generate new phishing emails, it would also determine when the old phishing email stopped working or was being picked up by security software, and translate that new lore into multiple languages. It would replace burnt infrastructure automatically being used in the attacks and register and erect new websites in addition to providing those texts and images. The reason there have not been AI-assisted attacks is simple, he thinks. Anyone trained in AI can get an extremely lucrative job without turning to crime. And this is now changing. Changing for two reasons. Reason number one, barriers for entry for using machine learning systems are quickly coming down. It's easier and easier to use AI frameworks. And the second reason is that the criminal groups have more and more money. It's easier, closer and closer to the threshold where they can start competing for the same skill set.
He noted that a major advantage defensive vendors have had over the past few years is better automation. Manual attacks go head to head against intelligent systems. When that fades, when automated attacks go head to head against automated systems, the speed and depth of attacks would likely pick up. The only thing which can stop a bad AI is good AI. This has been a production of SC Media. I'm Joe Uchel. The introductory song was What's the Angle by Shane Ivers. You can hear more of his work at silvermansound.com. Thanks for listening.